I'm in a place called Marisouy, one of the suburbs of Paris, I think it is anyway. Now, I'm looking for uh, something to do with the V2, Vengeance Weapons 2, storage facilities. Now, there's a quarry here called the Henoch Quarry. And uh, uh, after the Battle of France, 1940, the Germans took over this place and started to change the um, change this quarry into a storage facility for V2s. And that's what I'm going to find. So come along and have a look at uh, what I'm going to look at. Now I'm at the exit or entrance to this um, this V2 storage facility. Um, unfortunately, it's locked, but I can. Uh, I s there must be another way in. I'll have a look in a minute. There's a um, uh, for to bring the goods in before they store them in here. I'm assuming this is the place where they store them behind here, and they would no doubt take them through uh, this galley behind us, this concrete galley back out and link it to the uh, railway. The railway line is just above us, so it will be linked somewhere down there. As I said before, um, this site is the Henock Quarry, which is I think, limestone. And in 1938, the Henock family, or the company, had a visit of uh, uh, a group of Germans looking to invest in this place. And, um, but that, I think that thing was, for, that's as far as it went. But they say that some of the um, people that worked here especially when the Nazi took over, uh, said that was possibly the fifth column, which I think they're like a secret service, I think they are, something like that. And they were looking at ways and means of sort of using this facility. Now this facility would have been brought here because they needed three types of plant, or three types of building, three types of places, I should say, um, when Hitler decided in 1942 to uh, push the V2 um, facilities further in the world so they could fire onto London. A place called Sonderbouten. They needed three places. One was storage, which is here at uh, Enoch in Marisui. Uh, and then another place where they made liquid oxygen was in a place called Kermon, which is uh, about 70 80 miles or 100 kilometers from here. And uh, the other place is where that was where they made the liquid oxygen. Now, the place where they store where they basically put everything together to fire at England would have been on the um, coast of Calais, now it's Epilec and Lacopole. That's the two places that they built. Um, it never really took off, you <laughs> said that a bit of pull though, uh, because the um, British bombed that over in, in, a, in an operation called Operation Crossbow and they ended up uh, setting the V1, or V2s off, sorry, uh, in Holland. So let's um, try and find another way in and I'll look at what's behind this gate or this door, this big massive blast door, see if you can find anything behind it. Uh, we found a way in, so we're going to have a walk in now and a look round. Now this is something like uh, 1.5 kilometres long, these tunnels. Um, it's over 8 to 10 metres high and about 8 to 10 metres wide, something like that. 
Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I put it on the bottom anyway, I'll tell you what it is. Um, it, it was capable of holding 600 um, V2s before they were shipped out to uh, places, as I said before, like um, Epilec and um, uh, Lacropol. So um, let's go and have a look at what's inside this building. Light on first. The uh, rocks collapsed at some point. Uh. Yeah, it's in the roof to hold the uh, Sandstone ceiling up. Country. You can see the electric insulation there. Cables would run across this. Well, the Germans put that in um, when they were here, so they could power the plants and that up. Electric and all sorts of things that they would have powered up. Um, and then, obviously, 1945, the liberation of. Uh, Europe, then the, the Henock family would have um, used this electric to carry on digging all the uh, limestone that out. <laughs> More rock fault. Gantry, you can see it. That is somebody else has been down here. Look, it's in French, so they've done exactly the same as what I've done, trying to explain where it is. This is the way to the blast door, so uh, let's have a walk and have a look at it. If you can see, there's the blast door where I was trod the other side. If you look up there, that's basically, a, 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 I think, a machine gun post. So that is covering anything anything like uh, enemy or such as us coming in there and trying to destroy this place or uh, spies or whatever it may be so that there if you think about it as you walk through there you won't see that 
but they'll see you. Right, as you can see, I'm on the other side of the glass door. I was outside before talking about coming in here. I found a way in, obviously, from the top. In the, now, here, they installed over 600 uh, V2s. And the way in and out would have been this way, and probably the other way as well, which is about one and a half kilometres down that way, but not going that far today. Um, there more might have been rail track here. Either that or it's definitely a road anyway. Uh, Sends the top as well, so just different things would have been brought to the top, probably personnel and that to go inside there and here would have been the way in to uh, get way in and way out to get um, the V2s out of this building. I'm going to check the height of this, but I don't think the V2 could actually, I don't think it would fit because the V2 is like 14 metres, which is about 30 foot, something like that. I'll check to see uh, how high this is because I've got a feeling it'd be on the side anyway. I can't see them bringing them out this way. The reason I say that is because there's no point bringing them out stone right? weight because they're not going to make a firing launch or a, uh, a launch site here. It wasn't done here, it was, it was put here for the safety of um, the Allies bomb and everything else. So in this way, it was an old quarry and um, it was theoretically safe. The, before the Allies had, uh, I'll just say, after the liberation of um, France about 1944, I think when this was liberated, Mary Sui, uh, they'd only finished about three quarters of this thing anyway, so it wasn't finished at all. The Nazis could have actually fired, if they'd have made a, a, a long site outside of it, they could have actually fired a hit moment from here, it's about 197 miles, which is right at the limit of these V2s. I think V2 is about 200, um, 200 miles of 40 kilometres or something like that. So they could have hit it really from here if they wanted to, um, but they didn't. And uh, Lack of Paul and Epilec were uh, made useless by in Operation Cooperation Crossbow. So they set their place fire from a place called Wazana or Vazana in Holland, which is near the Hague actually. And that was right on the edge of the limit as well. But the way they did that was they, um, they had a, a mobile system where they bring it on a, on a truck and set it all up there within about an hour or so and then they can fire it at London, obviously you get all these settings and then fire it at London. Right, so I've got my little measure here, a uh, little uh, range finder, no, not range finder, it's basically a, a little thing what I'm going to do. I'm on the foot up here, let's press this up where it is really. So, if you look at that, Oops, 8 metres 25, so it's not that high, so there's no way that they could put um, a V1 upright in here, they'd have to be on the side. I think this is whether you the stack them together, so it's what, 12 foot if it's that. Um, hold on a minute. Four metres, four, eight, 12, 12, 13 foot, that's about right for two, two of these rockets to be um, stacked side by side. So this gantry here is just for the soldiers to walk back and forward to. So they will be stacked down here in a row. Probably could be what three to four high really when you look at it. That's a guess. And then they could be carted out when necessary. Started on the, the V2 on mass production on, in 1942. Um, they were classed down as a vengeance weapon, V1 and V2. Um, these V2s were called Virgil's Tungsto Waffen, which basically meant vengeance weapons. They were, they were mass produced or started mass produced in 1942. A lot of them were actually uh, made in a place called Metalwerk, which is in Germany. Um, the reason it was moved there is because the Allies were bombing Piedmont, where all the development started. So, um, because it had been bombed so much, they moved it to underground, just like this place here, this storage area. The first B-2 weapon was fired uh, at London on the 8th of September 1944 at a place called Vazana, which is in um, uh, Holland. Uh, it's not far off the Hague. It's actually, the, I think, it's the Hague anywhere. But they used. Um, uh, they used a mobile unit which was much safer for them to fire and less chance of us allies to uh, find out where they were being fired from. Because the big places like uh, 
uh, like Epilec and uh, Lacopol were easily spotted and were bombed anywhere, so they were useless. This quarry was seized by the Nazis beginning of, uh, around about 1940, I think it was, to do the uh, storage of the uh, V2s. Um, they forced the local labour into helping them to control, because obviously they, know, they knew the Serbia very well, so they knew what to expect and how to basically um, do what the Nazis wanted to do. They say that if they hadn't, if the French archers, the, the locals who were employed to do this, if they wasn't um, going to do anything, i.e. they wouldn't um, help the Nazis doing it, they were sent to a concentration camp. That's apparently what the weapons were known. Um, I may have said before that uh, the Germans installed electrical equipment in here. Uh, you see all the little uh, conductors and stuff like that, the, the isolation things, are all running along the, wrong, along the ceiling. Um, they also put, uh, apparently they put trains inside here, so those railway lines going into here, so they could put the V2s on them, and then they could carry them to various places they needed to set off. Um, and after the war, the, uh, the, Hen the Henock family, uh, used this to carry on quarrying, so they did one thing that was good, which was put electric in, but that was about it really. Apparently, the, um, there was no V2 or A4 V2 um, rockets ever stored in this place. It was basically a waste of time, really. Um, this was liberated on the 8th of September 1944, um, so they only started to use these V2s just shortly after that, so they were never used for storage. It was basically a, a folly, to be honest with you. Fascinating though. Apparently there's um, eight of these places scattered around France, and two were just draft, and um, they named them differently. Well, this one was um, 1401, I think it was, which is Marie Soui. So I hope you like my uh, little bit of history on Marie Soui V2 rocket launching uh, storage facilities. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. See you again then.